Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria and for this video I am doing a vlog. So I'm actually filming this intro after I've already finished the vlog because I filmed a previous intro and this vlog ended up changing and that previous intro no longer fit what this vlog is. So when I set out to do this vlog I actually intended to read three books that were people's favorites of the year and I failed at that. I ended up having a very serious, one of my worst flare-ups um, of one of my chronic illnesses that I've ever had and I was not in the mood to read two of the books that I had chosen. They were very heavy and I was just like not in that right headspace and so I didn't read those books and I ended up just switching and reading one book in this video and it is actually one that I had set out to read in my original video and that is Flawless by Elsie Silver. This one was an incredibly popular book last year in 2022. It was on many people's top books of the year list. The second book in the series, Heartless, was literally all of my friends number one book of the year and I wasn't able to read it because there was no audiobook and the audiobook came out in the end of December. And so that is what this reading vlog is. It's me reading Flawless and like I said this was during a serious flare-up of mine which I don't go heavily into in the video but you can see that I don't look the best. I am in my bed for almost this entire video. The angles are not great. The lighting is not great and I actually considered not posting this vlog at all and entirely scrapping it because I was self-conscious about the way that I looked in this video and I just decided to say fuck it and show you guys what it actually is to be me. And so I am posting this vlog and I am reading Flawless. So that's what this vlog is. I hope that you enjoy it. Um, I did have a lot of thoughts on it. So here you go. Here's the vlog. Hi guys. So I am updating you. I just started Flawless last night. Um, so I have a reading update and a life update, so I'm aggressively not feeling well. Um, just like very bad stomach flare-ups and everything, and I really, really, really don't feel well, and I just ha I had to get out of bed because I've been like curled in the field position for like the whole day and yesterday also, but I had to get out of bed, so we're out over here. I'm chilling with my cat who really wants to attack the squirrel that's outside, but that's what we're doing. The lighting is really bad if I have the back like that. Maybe I can prop you there. So with the reading, I did start Flawless. I don't know how far I am into it. Chapter 9. I'm chapter 9 and it's pretty good so far. I'm enjoying it. Um, I think the whole concept is kind of fun but also really dumb. Um, so the basically what it's about is this guy is a bull rider and he alienated one of his major sponsors and had some like bad press recently and so his PR company sends a a uh, woman who works for the company to basically be his like babysitter and like stay with him 24 7 and like live with him and everything but he alienated his sponsors by saying he hates milk which I just think is just such a dumb thing but it's also kind of funny and it it does fit with the story because he it makes people hate him because he grew up in farming land and there's a lot of like dairy farms around him and so he told them the truth he doesn't like milk but they don't like that he had to say that because a lot of his big sponsor was like a dairy farmer or like a dairy production company or whatever. So that was a little like really, but I also found it funny and it fits the story. Um, so basically I'm like I said, I'm not far into it. I'm only chapter nine, but the girl and him are living together at his family's ranch, which I really, really like. I like that his family is there. I like that we're introducing all of his he has two brothers i really like his dad um and his nephew already so that's been cute i definitely 
agree with the people who've said that this is not enemies to lovers. It's marketed as an enemies to lovers, but it is not. So if you're expecting like enemies to lovers going into it, it's not. They just don't particularly like one another because he's mad that she has to babysit him and she thinks that he's kind of a spoiled ass basically but they don't not like each other you know um it's just kind of a frustration of this is what I'm doing with my life right now I think it's gonna get really interesting when they go on the road and have to like stay in hotels together um so I'm looking forward to that um I like seeing the other characters because I'm reading this when the other books book two is already out and book three I already know who that one is about so it's interesting to see the first books read the first book knowing what the future books hold I guess um but yeah I'm enjoying it I like the writing the audiobook is done really well and I needed I had been reading like really heavy things recently and just when I'm not feeling well now I was just like I need something like light and fun so this is really working for that and I'm enjoying it so that's our little reading update for now all right so I am continue um continuing to listen to flawless by elsie silver and i got to this one part that i really like so i just wanted to say something about it so like i said the hero is a bull rider and he is older than other bull riders he's been doing it for like 10 years and everyone's like you should retire you should retire but he's one of those people who just like this is all he's ever done all he's ever wanted to do he doesn't know who he is without bull riding and I get that. I am with him and I fully can completely sympathize. It must be so horrifically difficult to put so much of your life into something and then have your body betray you. I mean, I get that. Um, and he hurt himself. I mean, like I said, he's older and he isn't as, as spry as he was when he first started. And so he he got hurt and his arm is bothering him, but he doesn't want to go to see a doctor because the doctor is going to tell him not to ride anymore. And so Summer, the heroine who's been like following him around and having to stay with him, she goes out and gets like a whole bunch of different like painkiller things and creams and stuff that he can put on it. And it's so, so cute. And then he's like, I can't put the cream on because I can't get to it, can't reach to it. And so Summer has to do it for him. And I just love those kind of scenes where she is so determined to get him to help himself. And then he's like, finally, like lets in and stuff. So it's one of my favorite things. It's one of my favorite types of scenes in books. So I just thought that was so cute and I wanted to talk about it. But oh my gosh, I am enjoying this a lot. It's it's very cute and they are on the road now. So like they're not at his family's ranch anymore. And I liked when they were at his family's ranch with his family. But like I said, I'm excited. I was ex before I was talking about how I was excited for them to go on the road. So they're like having to have hotel rooms like right next to each other at the same hotel and everything and they're like constantly together but I love the way that Summer is like standing up for him because a lot of the people don't like him um in the like bull riding community I guess they think he's kind of an asshole and think he's like God's gift to bull riding and Summer like defends him a lot which I really appreciate because she re recognizes how good he is and how good of a person he is like regardless of all the bad press that he's had and I am really appreciating that in her uh, character so I think this is really cute I'm just chilling in my bed I've got some soup I'm gonna keep listening to it okay so the hero and his brothers decided to toilet paper a tractor they have this like rivalry with the people next door and so they decided to toilet paper the tractor because the next door neighbors that they don't like po uh, parked their tractor on the hero's family's land and so they the brothers decided just like in fun to go toilet paper this tractor and then the heroine got angry at him and I just what does that have to do with his image what does that have to do with anything about his public relations and his image and her job? Like, fuck off. She's getting all, like, pissy and angry at him. And I just don't get it. I don't understand. That has literally nothing to do with his sponsorships, nothing to do with his job. The tractor was on their land. So even if the people, like, called the police or something, 
they're not in the wrong. They toilet papered it. They didn't destroy it or anything. It wasn't like a damaging of property. They committed no laws. There is no repercussions for this. It was just stupid boyhood fun that the boys were having. And I just don't really get why the heroine seems to think that this hero, despite all of the signs that he is not an asshole, why the heroine thinks that he's still this like asshole or like not a good guy. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Um, because the hero has shown no signs of having bad press at all, other than this one statement he made about milk, which was a true freaking statement. He has no bad press. And I just don't understand why they made such a big deal out of this one thing that is obviously based off of all of the things that the hero has shown to me as the reader. That was an isolated inst incident. So I don't see why he, who has had no bad press throughout the years and years that he has been a bull rider in the sport, why this one incident made him require a 24-hour babysitter. I just think that that is the stupidest thing. I, I am not understanding that whatsoever. So, so weird. And then the um, heroine also, with the just like plot in general, the fact that the heroine had a heart condition seems very random. It has had no impact on the story. And I know that it doesn't necessarily need to have an impact on the story, but it feels like this random thing that just like gets dropped in without other information just to give the heroine like a hard backstory. But they already had her being like her parent, her father cheated on his wife with her mother. And so she's already a product of scandal. And then her stepmother hates her. So like it's already, she's already had like a difficult struggle with that. I don't know why they had to add this heart conditioning in. Also, why her ex-boyfriend, it's just very random, um, very stalkerish also. And I feel like it's giving abuse, um, the ex-boyfriend's relation ship with her. It's, I mean, obviously with, she was a teenager, it's an age gap relationship and everything, but also like him keeping full eyes on her, like it's stalkerish and it's creepy and also not part of the plot. So like, is there going to be more about him? Because if there isn't, that's just another thing that's random that's just dropped in. So I hope that there's something else about him, but also don't because I just don't think that that's like an interesting plot line to go into. But I also don't know how they're going to make an interesting plot line to go towards because hero had this was an isolated incident so like his whole PR thing is irrelevant so I'm enjoying the relationship between the characters but the plot of the book itself does not really make a lot of sense to me uh so I really like the hero I really do like the hero and I like his family and I like his determination to be a bull rider I think I was talking about that earlier or whenever I was talking about it but his determination to be a bull rider I really appreciate so I don't know I, I'm I think I'm like chapter 18 or something now so I'm gonna keep going I hope that the plot goes somewhere all right this is a horrible angle but I don't feel good and this is where I'm most comfortable so the heroine okay let's start with the hero the hero is so upfront in the scene that I was just reading the hero is upfront and he's like makes it clear that he wants her and she full declines and full is like no go do this with somebody else and then the next day she sees him with somebody else just talking to somebody else and then basically has the equivalent of like an adult temper tantrum where she goes off with some other guy and is like, well, I'm going to be reckless. I'm going to do something different. And I'm like, if you wanted to fucking be with him, just fucking be with him or like make it clear that you don't necessarily want him to be with anyone else. You do like him, but you're worried about your job. Just like have a conversation a little bit more than just go do this with somebody else. I just, it's making me frustrated and I don't want to be frustrated. 
And I don't know. It's just they talk so much about him being a ladies man. And maybe he was in the past. But throughout this entire book, he has shown no desire to get with other women. He's even giving like a young guy in the bull riding or like community advice about bull riding and then the young guy asks him about girls and the hero is like well do you like her the young boy is like well yeah I do and the hero is like well then go but make sure you're you're up front with it because he literally says the words buckle bunnies have feelings too which is a hilarious and ridiculous sentence but also it's really true like even if you're I hate the terms, but if you're a buckle bunny, if you're a puck bunny, if you're anything like that, that follows sports people or celebrities or a groupie or anything, yeah, you want to be with the people who are in the whatever community that you're in, but they also are human beings who have feelings and deserve to not just be taking adva- taken advantage of. Um, And I just liked even that just like small hint towards that. I like the hero a lot. I like the way he talks. I like how much passion he has. But I know that I'm hard on my heroines. I know for a fact that I'm hard on my heroines. I always am. But the heroines are somebody who I tend to put myself into the shoes of the heroine and I'm like I would never have reacted in that way and I know that that is not the right way to do it but it's the way that it's hard to not do that for me so it's my emotional connection it's my emotional impact on the heroine of how would I react in that situation and I think that that has this that is one of the main reasons why a lot of the books that are my all-time favorites are books that I see myself in. I, The books that I love, the heroines, those are the ones that are always my favorites. It's, I mean, Broken Vow, Riona is the character who I talk so much about how I loved her in that book. It's the same thing with uh, Isabel Ward from Forbidden. I talk about that book, and whenever I talk about that book, I mention how much I love the heroine in that book. And those are the things that I talk about when I talk about some of my favorite books. Same thing with uh, Crescent City. I love Crescent City. I love Bryce so much. And so when I'm when I'm talking about books, I, I it's something that I've really, really noticed, especially within the last year while doing my like top 22 of 2022 was if I like a heroine, I'm it's more often that I will really, really like the book. If I can see myself in that sh- heroine, I'm get more likely to to love the book. And this heroine is just it's it, I'm not having that emotional punch with her because she keeps doing things that bother me and keeps doing things that I'm like, why are you making these decisions? That's a dumb decision. So like I said, I'm going to keep going and everything, but I, I, I'm getting a little bit frustrated. I'm about fucking done being a gentleman with you. And the only thing I'm ruining for you is you being with someone else what a line. I'm into it. That was great. I loved the communication back um, of him fully going out uh, and stating straight to her face. I'm sick of you thinking that I've been fucking everything that moves when I haven't looked at anyone but you since I saw you. That's what I was seeing from the hero. And I was so frustrated by the heroine thinking that he wanted to be with other women when he made no indication that he wanted to be with other women, but was pursuing her. So I really liked that they had that communication. Um, into that line, this hero is smooth. Also, the whipped cream on the scar, that was sexy. So it's already picking up this like second half. Um, I realized I was like at the halfway mark. So the first half was definitely a little bit slow um, in certain parts, but it's already picking up with the second half. So that's such a good line. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm back, but he just, it's been like one minute 
but he just said the words, I want to worship at her throne. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This hero is great. I'm into this. I'm into this hero. Fuck yes. All right, this is a terrible angle and I'm not wearing any makeup, but you're propped up in my car and there's no place to put my phone to hold you up. I'm going to need to get like a thing. So it's been a couple of days actually since I last spoke to you um, and I finished Flawless uh, back a couple of days ago. And I think that for 2023, I'm going to try and at least wait like a day or two or the next day to rate my books because a lot of my ratings in 2022 were like gut ratings and then I went back and changed them later because I was like looking back on it that book I didn't I get to the ending of the book and I get so happy by the like love and happily ever after at the end that I forget about all of the problems that I had with the rest of the book and that's what I loved loved the second half of Flawless. It went so much better than the first half. I really think that the pacing like picked up. It, it wasn't like dragging as much because the first half I was a little bored. I was really like rolling my eyes at the conflict, at the whole thing. Like I had my whole clips about it, but I really did like the second half a lot. But because of I had those issues in the first half, this is not a five star book. And I think that I'm going to give it four stars. It's either four or four and a half. I can't really decide between the two because I do like it better than a lot of the books I've read this year. And I've given a lot. I've, it's the 13th of January right now. And I have read like 14 books, I think, so far. And I haven't given any of them five stars. Did I, I liked Flawless better than a lot of the books that I've read this year that I've given four stars. So because of that, I'm like, should I give it four and a half stars? Because I did really enjoy myself in the second half of it. But I was irritated in the first half. I was, the twist went a whole different way than I was expecting in the second half. The ex came back and he was like, actually like a really creative, interesting storyline that I was very much not expecting. And I really appreciated that because it's gotten to a point where sometimes when you read a lot of romance, I'm sure that some of my romance booktubers can relate with me on this, is that when you read a lot of romance and you see a plot coming, you're like, oh, this is probably going to go this way. A plot that I've seen a hundred times before, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just like, oh, I, 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 know, I know where this is going. But just like you know every romance is a happily ever after. Like, you know where it's going, so you're like, okay, this will be an easy ride. But I get so excited when books go an entirely different way than I was expecting, and that's what Flawless did. And because of that, I really, really appreciated that conflict in the end, um, like third act, I guess. Uh, I also really liked the um, side characters a lot. I really am excited for uh, his brother's books, especially the brother whose book is not out yet. I can't remember his name. I know Cade is the second book and the new book, the third book that comes out in February is Powerless. And I think that follows the hockey player, but I'm really excited about the other brother who's like, a uh, in the army or in the military. I thought he was cool and I'm excited for his book. And I hope that the heroine, what's her name? crap. I don't remember her name. I hope that her sister comes back. Her name was Summer and her sister's name was Winter. That's what it was. I hope that her sister Winter comes back because I was intrigued by her and I would be interested in reading like a book that maybe dealt with her um, getting like a, a romance. Um, I would be, I'd be into that. So Elsie Silver, I want that book. Um, but because of that, because of like my enjoyment of all the other things and my excitement of the twist that I wasn't expecting, I do think that it's leaning more towards four and a half stars because I did very much enjoy myself. But there were things that I was like, really? But I can totally see why this book is so well loved and why there is so much hype around it because it's it's different. It's not just like every other romance. And her writing for this book is so well done. You can tell just from this book that she is a 
a really good writer and I'm excited to read the next book in the series which is Heartless. Heartless's audiobook should be out soon so I might actually read Heartless for this vlog but this vlog is already probably really long because I talk so fucking much but anyway that's my f feelings on Flawless. Hey guys so I realized while editing that I never closed out this vlog so that's what I'm doing now. Um, I've decided not to include Heartless in this video and to just leave it at Flawless because I didn't want it to be longer than it already is. But do let me know down in the comments below if you would like to see me do a vlog of Heartless and hear all my thoughts on it. But other than that, that's going to be it for this video. So please like it if you liked it and subscribe so you can see more content from me. And I hope that you have the absolute best day.